Laws are created to guarantee the promise in the constitution. What did I say? A kingdom is a country with a government. A government functions on constitutional law. Laws are created to guarantee the promise in the constitution. So, when you come to God, you don't come with a religion concept. You have to come to come as you come to the judge. That was called the righteous judge. Amen. Amen. That's why you petition. You come to the judge to petition. And you, have, you need to understand two things. Kingdom as what? Government. And if you are a citizen of the kingdom, what's your right? You get your right from what? Constitution. Amen. Amen. You get your right from what? Constitution. So you have, you, have, you have to know the constitution. You have to know the promise that is in the constitution for you to demand your rights. Amen. Amen. Otherwise, you will be a citizen but not enjoying the benefit of the kingdom of God. That's why we need to read your Bible. Take your Bible. Read it. Read it. Find all the promises. Find all the previous cases that, that God deal with the children of Israel. In every, in every uh, book here in the Bible, there's a case for everything that happened. So before you defend your right, you have to know the previous case. That's why every judge, every lawyer, when he comes to the judge, you present the case, then you pull up the case. The case that something happened before. Amen. Amen. That's why God, when God is speaking to the children of Israel, you always remind them, he said, did I not do this? Remember, I take you out, I took you out from the, from what, from the, from Egypt. He remind them because he put out the case that present them. That's the way he teaches how to pray, how to petition to the government. And if you understand the principle, if you follow the instruction, and you follow the principle, your prayer will get results. Amen. Amen. Can I hear your, amen? Amen. Can I hear your voice? Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. So, petition is only possible whether it's government, constitution, and citizen. There must be three things, not a religion. Amen. Amen. There must be a government, then there must be a constitution, which gives you the right to demand what the government, what the constitution promises. So, you cannot promise if you don't know your rights. You cannot petition if you don't know your rights. That's what many people understand they stand before God. They let things to speak because you don't have to invent anything. You just you have to read your Bible. You need to read this Bible to know the promise, find the promise that God promised you. He promised you not in the constitution. Find the promises. Find the cases, the previous cases. For instance, uh, uh, you have a problem with the issue of blood. You remember that there is a woman in the in the when Jesus was walking, going. There's a woman that was having, having the problem of blood. Then you pull that case. The Bible said, by strap of Jesus Christ, you are what? You are healed. Then that's a that's a that's a evidence. Your evidence what is the word of God. Then you pull up the case and say, Father, you promise, you promise that by strap of Jesus we were healed. I demand, as you did it to the person that was at, at what, the issue of blood. You understand? He has what, the issue of blood. Then you put in that case, they remind God that you demand your rights. Then the government is there to petition to give you your rights. Amen. Amen. Are you getting it? Amen. Glory be to God. Uh, this is what you have to know. All citizens are equal entitled to the rights, privileges, and benefits of citizenship. All what? Citizens. As what? Are you listening? All citizens are equally entitled to the rights, privileges, and benefits of what? Constitution. Amen. The Bible lays out the laws, principles, characteristics that define God's kingdom. The Constitution laid the foundation for every country 
and how it's going to be governed. An open society in which government is based on the will of the king for his citizen. Amen. Amen. So that's that's the way you have to understand. That's the way you have to pray. You have to do what? That's the way you have to do what? To petition the government. The power establishment we have to have two things. The judgment and the justice. Amen. Amen. Make some noise if you are listening. Amen. Amen. Born 
a gift. Amen. Amen. We do not make him a gift. All we can do is acknowledge that he is the king. The only thing we can do, amen, is to acknowledge him. He is the what? The king. We don't make him king. So that's why coming to church or not coming to church, you don't make Jesus the king. He is still the king because you own everything. If you come to church, thank God. If you don't come to church, you don't vote Jesus out of the, of the of kingship. He's still the king. The Bible says the earth is the Lord is and the fullness thereof. The king is immediately he become immediately the Lord. Lord means owner. So the king has to have ownership of the land that is domain. He has the rulership of that domain. That is the kingdom. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. He said, all we can do is what? To acknowledge him as the king. We can't add anything to him. You know, let, let me tell you something. You see, sometimes God lets you to pass through what you are going through. Sometimes God lets you, God will let you to go through wilderness so that you can know who is going to be with you and who is not going to be with you. Because some people, when in time of celebration, we can celebrate together, but when God led you, pass, and led you to pass in, in the wilderness, that's where we are going to understand who was with you. Okay. They pretend to be with you. Let me tell you something. Go some stuff. Let God take you to the wilderness. If those people they will go with you, don't leave you in the road. So it's the way to discover which people are with you and which people are not with you. This is the wilderness. But they, thank God that there's a promised land ahead of us. Amen. 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 Yes. There's what? There's a promised land ahead of us. Even we have passed, we passed through the river. The Lord uh, uh, David said that if, if I pass through the water, he said, if you pass through the water, it shall not overflow you. Amen. Amen. He said, though that beginning was small, that let the end of the increase abundance. Amen. Sometimes God has to allow this thing so you can discover the two people who will follow you. When Jesus was preaching, Jesus fed thousands of people, multitude of people. He fed them with bread. Listen, the world that they were full of the mountain, the people that were full to dwell whatever. You know what happened? Now God said, No, these people are with you. And just tell the disciples, say, You are with me because of the bread that I feed you. It's not that because of the bread. You follow me because of the bread that I feed you. Amen. Then, when he didn't feed them, the Bible said, they walk away. And when he did, he see he was with the twelve. I said, did I not choose you? Listen, there are some people, God has to take you to the wilderness to know the people that you, you, you are with them to listen. Where you are going. Amen. Amen. So, what we have to do is to acknowledge your what? The king as what? As the king. There's nothing. Let me tell you something. If we preach him, we don't preach him, he's still the king. So coming to church or not coming to church, he's still the king. You need God. <laughs> you need God. God actually doesn't need you. You need him to live. There was everything he had all by the power of his word. Which means that the world, or even Satan, is in the power of his word. If Satan exists because of the word of God, he upholds what? All things. Not some things, but all things. So, you, you need God. God doesn't need you. A fish doesn't want water. A fish needs water. Water doesn't, listen, water doesn't need a fish. If the fish go out of the water, who is going to suffocate? Is the water or the fish? The fish. The fish. When you come out of the presence of God, you will you die. That's what God said to, to Adam. He said, keep this way. He said, this way. He said, if you, you eat of this food, you shall die. Which means if you come out of my presence, you shall die. Your presence be, listen, 
The fish be in the water, is it add anything to the water? No. The water is still water. If it comes out, the water will be what? Water. So you're coming in and you're, you're going out. Does it change anything to God? You don't. He said, God doesn't if you come that you make him to be God. No. Don't deceive yourself. You need him. Because wherever you are, you will suffer. Because when you are out of the presence of God, you will suffer. And listen, the God that you are saving is not uh, five gods that you got out. I, I'm running here, I'm going this side. Let me tell something. It's still one God. Even if you change the office, it's still the one. So if you deceive me here, when you go to it, you, are you going to play to another God? It's still the same. You know what you did, what you did, what you did. So when, when you, whatever you run, even all those people that worship, they worship the still, the still one, one God. So if you go wherever you go wherever, then what are you doing? You come, you find yourself to him. So if you deceive him then, you think you are deceiving him? He knows your heart. So you must stop that behavior. God is still God. We need to acknowledge as a God. Amen. Amen. He's the king. Messiah of the coming of the king. Amen. Amen. 
He said, until Shiloh come. And the word uh, Messiah, Amen, is translated as Christ. Christ means the anointed king. So before Jesus came, there was already the announcement of him of coming as a king. Amen. Amen. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Let's read it. And Psalm chapter 2, verse, verse 6. Let's read it. Christ is set before us in scripture as a king. The very title, Christ or Messiah, suggests kingship. What did I say? Christ is set before us in scripture as a king. The very title, Christ or Messiah, suggests kingship. Isaiah, uh, Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Psalm chapter 2, verse 6. Can you read it? Let's read it so that the time, the time is about to close. Are you there? Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Christ is claimed to be a king. That's 
that's a, that's a proof. Amen. Now, we have another one. Eh? The class is acceptance. Acceptance of the title king. Because people, they call him king. Did he accept that or did he reject it? Class accept it. That I'm giving you Matthew chapter 20, verse 21 to 23. Matthew 21, verse 1 to 16. Mark 11. Luke 19, John 12, verse 12 to 16. Matthew 25, Luke 23, verse 43. But can you read it, this one? Amen. Matthew 13, verse 41 to 43. Let me read it. Are you blessed? 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 Are
the will of God is the testimony of God that give us. So Jesus will die then our we didn't have the right or the power because the the, the testament was not yet activated. It is that the death of the tester to for the testament for the testament to be activated. Amen. So the testament was not activated until the death of Jesus Christ. When Jesus died, then we have the right. Now you are a power citizen. Amen. The Bible says, even though you are in the world, but you are not of the world. Why? Because you have been translated into the kingdom of God. You are the son of light. Amen. You live in this life, but you are not of this life, of this world. You live in this world, but you are not of this world. Do you believe that? The Bible says, though you are in the world, but you are not of the world. Because you have been translated into the kingdom of God. You are in the kingdom of God now. Amen. The Bible says, go and Jesus come to the Kondamas. He told us that except the man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He said that he what? Born again. He cannot enter. He didn't say he cannot go. Because the kingdom of God is here now. Do you understand? The kingdom of God is not far from you. The kingdom of God is here now. When I say, when you are a shop right, and I say, church is impossible for you to enter. Amen. You don't get it. Amen. When I am a shop right and you are here in the church, then I tell you to come to shop right. I will tell you, come to shop right. I'm not going to use the word enter. But if I say enter, which means you are at the door. Uh, you don't get me. Do you understand? When I say come to shop right, you come to shop right because you are far. But if I say enter the shop right, means you are at the door of shop right. So when you are born again, you got them to go to the kingdom of God. You are in the kingdom of God. Can I say amen? Amen. Amen. We preserve the prayer of God. We serve the mighty God. We deserve yesterday. We deserve today. We deserve forever. When God say yes, nobody can say no. When God lifts you up, nobody can bring you down. God is your side. Favor is your side. Glory is your side. Lift up your hands in fire. Fire! Fire! Amen. He is the King of glory. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Amen. Do you understand? The Lord said, lift up your head, he can't. And be lift up your ancient thoughts. For the King of Glory shall come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of Glory. He is the King of ages. He is the King of nations. He is the King of kings. And the Lord of Lord. Having neither beginning of days nor end of life. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same forever. When God says yes, nobody can say no. When God lifts you up, Nobody can bring you down. God is on your side. Paper is on your side. Glory is on your side. Let the blood and fire. Fire! Fire! Amen. Are you blessed? Yeah. So when the Bible says, when you say you cannot enter, you are not referring to the kingdom of heaven. You are referring to the kingdom of God, which is present. Enter means you are the door. Amen. You are in the kingdom now. Can you make some noise? You are in now. The kingdom of God is here now. That is an enter. He except a man be born again. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. He cannot enter. Not he cannot go to. Do you understand? It is that he cannot go. If you go with me, there's a distance. When you say enter, which means it's near you. When you enter, you say enter into the church. Listen, I cannot tell you at the gate and say enter the church. Is it correct? If you are in town, then I say enter shop right. Oh, enter the church. It's impossible. What the word I will use? Come to the church. Then when you arrive to the church, at the door, then I will say what? Enter. Do, do you get me? I will say what? Enter. Enter what? In the church because you are at the door. Jesus brought the kingdom to you. You don't have to go to heaven. The kingdom is here now. Do you understand? He brought the kingdom to you. What you have to 
do is to be born again. Every pay, if you want to be a citizen of a country, you need to be born in, in that country. Citizenship is automatically when you are born in that country. That's what you say, you have to be born again. We have made an arrangement. You can be born again now and receive your citizenship and become a citizen of the kingdom. It's the answer now. He said, let a man be born again. He cannot see. That's another thing. He said, he cannot see. So I said, people who are believers, they cannot see the kingdom. That's what they postponed it in the future. The kingdom is not in the future. The kingdom is now. Do you believe that? The kingdom is not in now. It's not in the future. That's a, that's a wrong, wrong doctrine. That's a wrong preaching. Oh, and when, when you die, you go to heaven. No, you are in heaven now. Oh, you, you don't believe that. You don't have to go to heaven. You are in heaven now. Do you understand? You are in heaven now. You don't have to go to heaven. Did you not read? Did you not read? The Bible says that when Christ died, we died with him. When he, was, he rose up from the dead, we rose up together. Then when he went to heaven, we were in him. The Bible says we are seated together in heaven places. We are seated together in heaven in every place we don't have to go where you are your problem is your conscience you think of going to heaven but you are in heaven already do you can you make that noise hey, you can speak do you understand your conscience is detached you are in heaven already you don't have to go to heaven you are in say I am in say I am in I am in heaven I'm the kingdom in the kingdom of God I don't have to go. I'm in. The Bible says you were translated into the kingdom of God. So you are not in the kingdom of darkness. The people and believers, people are still in the kingdom of darkness. But you have been translated. You are in the kingdom now. The kingdom of light. You are in it now. Amen. Glory be to God. So this is what you need to understand. Now we're gonna we're gonna share about how people are in the kingdom, but you don't benefit from the kingdom. Now there's a, another problem there. We're gonna share next Sunday. You can be a citizen and not benefit from your right, the citizenship. We've got many South Africans. They are not enjoying the benefit from their their rights. We've got people from Zim, from Congo. You know, you can be a citizen, but you're still suffering. So there are some secrets that you have to know. That's what Jesus said. I give you the keys of what? Of the kingdom. Keys means secrets. He said, I'll give you the keys of what? Of the kingdom. I'll give you secrets. He said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Are you, are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? I said, I'll give you the keys. So I have the keys now. The keys means laws. The keys means laws. A country that does not function by laws is, a, is not a country. So there's a law that you get your right from the law. Amen. Amen. Are you blessed? Yes. Are you blessed? Yes. Grab your hand if you are blessed. of peace. He is the judge of the nation. He is the savior of the world. He is the mighty counselor. He is the everlasting father. He is the invisible God. He is the king eternal. He is the immortal, invisible God. 